Hey man, in front of you is a very important module for this new sorting system that I'm trying to develop. This is a variable Shogavox sorter or an SVAR sorter is what I've been calling it. Basically what it does is that we will get Shogavox splitter outputs which will have shulker boxes with a single item type in it but they will all be partially filled. The role of these modules is to group up the items so we can send them off to the mergers to get full boxes. Now to demonstrate how it works, I'll put those boxes in and it will start mapping the modules and then we'll start collecting them and you can tell that it's collecting it because these torches are blinking which means it's receiving an item of that item type for that module. So right now it's done. If I were to show you what the filter items look like because they look very interesting. We use these blocker items over here which effectively means that this is stack size independent. So whether they're 16 or 64 stack it will work as long as it's a stackable item and the outputs come down here. The last shulker box is still currently used to map the module. We can reset this by clicking that. So the modules get resetted and we get the outputs over here. So to kind of explain how the modules work, I will show you the different components of it. So it relies on tactic priority. What that means is the game updates uh, certain components um, in a sequence and depending on where they are within this sequence list uh, you have different properties because of how everything updates like you do that. So for example some of you may have noticed that when you do a fast clock into something like this it will blink but if you were to change the tactic priority by putting a repeater in front of another repeater like this it will stay toggled on the reason for this is because within the game, uh, repeaters have this check where if there's a block like a repeater in front of it, it will change its tactic priority. So there's that. Another example is comparators. So right now we can't subtract it, but if we were to put something in front of it, we can now subtract it. Um, same thing over here. When we want to power it, we can't. Now we can. And it's actually this... Uh, system over here is what's used in the SVAR sorter. So Crane from Melantech showed this in his pair searcher. Uh, basically what happens is because the item only exists within this dropper for two game ticks, the comparator won't pick it up, but if we start changing its tactic priority, we'll start picking it up. And after showing that to the legendary Psycraft member program Trouble, he came up with this system over here. Basically what happens is when we send the items through, they are offset it in a way where when it does not get sucked in by the hopper here, the tactic priority will power this dropper, which will first uh, lock this hopper over here, and then it will push the item to the next module. So if I were to, let's say, break that one, let it get picked up. That doesn't get powered and we get our item there. The next things to have the entire sorter work was to detect whether an item did come through or not. Of course we can detect it using a comparator here but that's a bit large and laggy. Crane came up with this super smart idea where you have a comparator and gate and basically what that does is that if you were to power this comparator in a different way because we already know that if you were to power up with a observer, two game ticks isn't enough for it to uh, register the update. However, if you were to power up for longer than that, let's say four game ticks, it will pick up. Or you can do this smart way over here where we have one observer powering the comparator, another observer updating it. So if we do that, we can do that. And over here we have a synchronization line, which is one part of the AND gate for the comparator. And the second part is this redstone box. So if you were to imagine it for a moment, the only difference between a module picking up an item and not picking up an item is these comparators lining up. And the synchronization line is set up so that it will only ever pick up 
a signal when this redstone lamp over here turns off. So if I were to showcase this or then my locked with the power that, you see these redstone lamps actually uh, last longer than what they're meant to. Now if I were to, let's say, break this middle one over here, power it, it turns off, synchronization line picked it up, and we get a compared output. The last part that, oh, so the last thing that I stole from Crane was this system over here, which is a way to detect when we first pick up an item, because when we first map an item, we don't want it to spit it out. We want to use it to, well, map the module. And what this does is that it uses buds for these uh, pistons. And what happens is that when we first pick up an item, pick it up, update the bud, but we don't send a signal through. And only the second and next signals that we start sending things through. So again, one goes through, goes through, doesn't go through, goes through, doesn't go through, goes through. And in order to reset this bud line and also to flush out the items that are being used to map, we use the same thing with the uh, comparator to get a signal out. And it's timed perfectly in a way where this comparator will light up, power the block, transfer over to the next comparator, and also update the piston over here to be budded. So if I will showcase that, there we go. And of course, combining all these three, we were able to get the S1 solar to be this small. It's six wide, which is pretty impressive. And you can see in the toggle states, it has an inbuilt uh, is full detector, which basically has all the items bypass this module. For the purpose that I'm using it, it's actually better for me to have overflow items go and get potentially mapped to a next module. That's perfectly fine for me. And yeah, if you want a seven wide, you can use this one, which has a couple of more locked hoppers. And, but yeah, they're very small and also very, very important for the sorting system that I want to do. In fact, I wanted to showcase the actual uh, sorting array in use, but it would have been a bit of a long video if I were to include all this explanation plus how I plan on doing the sorting. So the sorting video itself will be uh, maybe the next video, maybe, but yeah, that's all.